Hey everyone, Ian King here with your weekly Winning Investor Daily YouTube update. And before we get into today's action, I wanna please ask you if you like what we have to say, go ahead and smash that like button, subscribe to our channel, and also feel free to leave any comments about anything we discussed today. Joining me this week, my friend, colleague, uh, Banyan Hills resident Gen Z advisor, Steve Fernandez. Steve, Steve tells me that he is Gen Z, but technically he's a millennial. Um, but regardless, he has great insights on all the things that the kids are looking at today because that's important. Today, we are going to be talking about something we mentioned a few uh, weeks ago. We've covered a, f a couple other times in these videos, the metaverse. And why am I talking about it today? Well, last week, Facebook and Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg came out and said they're pivoting their company towards the metaverse. They're going to spend $10 billion in the next year, probably $100 billion over the next decade, building and developing the metaverse. And Steve, will you please explain to our viewers exactly what this means for the metaverse? What is the metaverse? How is Facebook going to change what we think of the metaverse now? Sure. So if you hear, first of all, if you hear someone give you a clear, definitive definition of the metaverse, they don't know anything about the metaverse. <laughs> I say that because it's really kind of uh, up in the air at this point. It, if you think about what the metaverse is, I see it as taking all of our experiences in a physical world, um, basically just our state of being in the physical world and translating that into a digital format. Uh, so think of something as simple as you know sitting in a room like you could be sitting in a room uh, across the country if you're in the metaverse and you can do that with technologies like virtual reality where you're basically in a 3d simulation right mm -hmm. um, so we've been doing metaverse things for a very long time um, i like to think of this as a digital identity right we've had digital identities since the internet launched and since we began sending emails, social media. So Facebook, who was pretty much the pioneer, successfully pioneered social media, um, making this huge business change this late in their their uh, business cycle, it just speaks volumes about where we're at in the metaverse and you know the future that we're in store for. And I think you said something so key right there is that Facebook created the idea of a digital identity. You know, back Steve, back in my day, when we first got the internet, there was, you know, it was very difficult to kind of, you know, publish yourself on the internet or, you know, publish photos. You had to know code and HTML and build your own website, but Facebook made it really easy. It's just, you know, drag and drop, or even if you're on your mobile phone, you just post photos and then you go and you connect with friends and whatnot, and you like those photos. This is just taking things a step forward. But, you know, one thing I think that is a little overlooked is the fact that when we have this digital world where we have these digital identities, the custody of things that are you know ours, the things that we buy and sell in the digital world is going straight for the blockchain, right? I mean, I know you agree with me on this. Right, no, I agree. Um, when you think about, first of all, my thoughts on Facebook being a centralized entity trying to control like I said, something that's evolving so fast and so huge, um, it's a little scary. So I think, I don't think we're going to have one central, you know, metaverse. I think we're going to have that scattered across one, but m probably multiple blockchain. Um, when you think about how big this could be, I don't even think it can function on one blockchain. Right. Facebook is the key to Web 3.0, though, because right now, you know, if you look at Ethereum, I think there's something like 10 million wallets on Ethereum. So, so it's small. And these wallets are things that you can custody your digital assets and your NFTs, your cryptocurrencies. We're just scratching the surface there. I think Bitcoin, there's probably 75 million wallets now uh, that, that hold Bitcoin around the world. There are 2.5 billion monthly active users on Facebook. The scale of this is enormous. Facebook touches half of the entire planet, you know? you might survey 10 of your friends and the majority of them, I don't know who you hang out with, might still be skeptical about cryptocurrencies. Nobody is skeptical about Facebook. So if Facebook is bringing you the, I mean, some people are skeptical about Facebook, but everyone has a Facebook account. Uh, 
and and now they're bringing you into the metaverse. They, I think they're going to build these worlds, but there will also be this functionality that you will control your private identity. And if you want to leave Facebook's metaverse and go to you know another uh, world or another metaverse, you will take those assets with you. You're not going to have your photos and your videos and everything like that controlled by a centralized entity. I think that that's the key here. And that's where blockchain fits into it. It allows us to keep track of who owns what in these metaverses. But I want to turn to a separate topic that's, that's similar like this. Um, play to earn games, right? And Steve, you're a gamer. You've played these games before, maybe not play to earn. I mean, how key is it that you can now build something in a game and then be able to sell it elsewhere or take it with you off that platform. So when you think about what we do every day, I mean, if you're in the working class, you know, you're working every day, um, you know, you're working to make money. We've never had that ability in a video game, unless you're a professional gamer, mm -hmm. you're not making that money in game. You're making it from like sponsorships uh, or clicks. If you're like a video streamer, uh, but the ability for the average Joe, who's just playing games with their friends or, uh, playing games like, you know, during their lunch break or whatever. Well, to make money during that time frame, I mean, it's a, it's a huge step towards a different type of work in the metaverse. What is work when you can play to, to earn right. money? Um, so, right. I think that that is inevitable uh, when you think about, especially in, you know, the less developed countries where the incomes are lower. Uh, some of these games can pay you what rivals a you know nine to five job in a foreign country which is is this, is this why the uh labor statistics have been lagging is this why we're seeing uh, uh maybe not play to earn but I, I did see um a stat that there was a huge like in our huge surge in like resignations and a lot of it were people under the 50k income barrier which is hard to believe hmm. but it was pretty much because they had made so much money in the crypto market. So yeah. pretty synonymous to play to earn, but a little bit different. Yeah. Um, so one other thing too, I just want to touch on the Facebook news tipped off huge rallies in certain cryptocurrencies that focus on different metaverse type gaming. Uh, the big one obviously being Decentraland, uh, another one being Axie Infinity, which is a, a play to earn game and also helps people in emerging markets who play the game are making more money playing this game than they are in their daily jobs. And lastly, one that we own in our crypto portfolio, the Sandbox game, ticker symbol S-A-N-D, I think went from about 70 cents over $3 just in the last week on Facebook news. So it's really impacting all markets. I think that institutional investors, anyone with a mandate to invest in the metaverse space, you know, now has to get in and get involved because Facebook is going to be throwing so much money at it. And I also think Facebook's competitors uh, will be building their own metaverse. You know, I could see something like Pinterest or Etsy or Snapchat, you know, building their own version of the, of their metaverse, which allows you to buy and sell digital assets and then control them uh, or enter it with, you know, maybe you build all these goods on Facebook's metaverse, and then you can move it to another platform. And so they're going to have to enable those platforms as well. So I think this trend is just that it's going to keep continuing. Yeah, I agree with that. I don't think that there's going to be, again, one centralized metaverse. Um, but that's the idea of the metaverse, mm -hmm. right? Like you said, you have your digital identity, and you can kind of go into different settings. And that really makes up the entire metaverse. Yeah. And you know, a lot of people say, well, what's what's the metaverse? Like, I don't I don't play games, you know, like, what's in it for me? Well, number one is the control of your digital identity, which you don't have now. You know, you, you have digital identities on these different platforms, Facebook, Instagram, whatever, but you don't have control of them. If, if the platform says, you know, you said something negative, we don't want you here anymore, they, they kick you off, you lose everything that you had previously posted on there. Uh, number two, the scale of the metaverse is just unfathomable. And I always go back to this concert that was put on in a game called Fortnite with all these, you know, users. It was a hip hop concert that drew 11 million people to a concert. Imagine you could not create a concert of 11 million people in the real world. I think the largest concert of all time was probably like Live Aid in the 80s. I think it drew a million people. Um, so 11 million people is just staggering, uh, and and you just can't you don't have that kind of scale in the real world. Yeah, I agree. It's something like 100 football fields worth of people um, tuning into somebody's avatar. Um, sounds ridiculous, but I mean, this is really where things are going. So like you said, you know, if you're not a gamer, how does this affect you? Mm -hmm. um, well, first of all, 
I think there's something like almost as many Facebook accounts that are gamers, like 2.5 billion. So, you know, there's a 50% chance that you are a gamer. Mm -hmm. uh, but in general, the metaverse isn't all about gaming, right? Um, we kind of discussed things that you could do. It could be as simple as hanging out, you know, spending time with friends, um, but even collaborating, right? We, we already don't really, if you're working remotely, which a lot of like, you know, the white collar jobs are, you're not in an Absolutely. office. Yeah. So, yeah, no, I agree with you. So let's leave it there. I just want to note one thing for our viewers, you know, crypto is the hot sector right now. We're always looking for the next trend. I've put together a webinar that's debuting next week. Please click the link below, sign up. I'm going to talk about where things are going in the future. Crypto obviously has had an incredible year and we're trying to find the next thing. You don't want to, you, we found the hot thing this year and now we're working on, you know, finding where the, the money's going to flow next. So please click on that webinar. Uh, any questions or comments, let us know. What do you think about the metaverse below in the comment section? And we'll be sure to address them on an upcoming YouTube video for myself and my Gen Z slash technically he's a millennial colleague, Steve Fernandez. Have a great weekend. We'll talk to you next week. Thank you.